Hi, this is Professor Lazarus again, and in this segment, we are going to talk about adjusting entries. Specifically, in this segment, we'll talk about two adjusting entry situations, prepaids and supplies. So let's get right into the material by asking the obvious question, what is an adjusting entry? An adjusting entry is merely a journal entry that is made at the end of the month in order to adjust certain accounts. Now, why do we need to adjust certain accounts? Because some things may have transpired during the month, or it could just be simply because of the passage of time, as we'll demonstrate with the insurance prepaid insurance uh, situation. So let's look at the example involving prepaids as the first adjusting uh, entry situation. So what is a prepaid? A prepaid is nothing but making a payment in advance. So in this example, on January 1st, we made a payment of $3,000 in advance for three months. So January 1st, payment of $3,000 was made for the months of January, February, and March. So the journal entry to record this transaction would be a debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash. Now what kind of an account is prepaid insurance? All prepaids, including prepaid insurance, are asset accounts. Why assets? You may recall from an earlier discussion that an asset is something that you own. So in this example, when the company pays money in advance for insurance, the company owns the right to receive insurance coverage from the insurance carrier. So if this were to be health insurance for the employees, then if the employees got ill during the next three months, the employees would go and get medical treatment either for a reduced fee or absolutely free of charge depending on the type of insurance coverage they have. So the employer has purchased some peace of mind. The employer owns peace of mind in this case. Now let's fast forward to the end of the month on January 31st. Now this is where the adjusting entry comes into play. So let's ask ourselves, what are we making the adjusting entry for? What is the reason? During the month, uh, as a result of a month having elapsed, the employer has used up one month of those three months of insurance coverage. So the adjusting entry that we have to make will reflect the usage of one month of insurance. That's your insurance expense. And at the same time, simultaneously, the process of using up a month of insurance reduces our prepaid insurance by one month. That's why the two accounts affected in your adjusting entry would be insurance expense and prepaid insurance. We debit insurance expense for 1,000 and we credit prepaid insurance for 1,000. Remember, when you credit prepaid insurance, you're crediting an asset account. That means you're reducing your prepaid insurance by 1,000. Now, let me give you another analogy to further help reinforce this concept of prepaids and this adjusting entry. Assume that you have a bucket of water and then you took a cup and you put the cup in, into the bucket and took out one cup of water and then you washed your hands. Let's stop and examine this action. You have used up one cup of water to wash your hands, haven't you? But what was the effect of taking the one cup of water on the level of water in the bucket? The level of water in the bucket dropped down by one cup. So two things happened simultaneously. You used up one cup of water to wash your hands and at the same time the level of water in your bucket dropped and that's exactly what happens with your prepaid uh, insurance and your insurance expense in terms of the adjusting entry. Now if you notice I have on top here next to prepaid the words deferred expenses. Prepaid is an example of a deferred expense. Why? What does the word deferred mean to you? Deferred means postponed to a later period. So in this case, what has happened is when you first acquired that insurance coverage in advance, you recorded it as an asset. And then a month later, with the passage of time, what has happened is that asset has become into an expense in small parts. So you, had, you acquired a $3,000 asset and one month later, $1,000 of the $3,000 of an asset has become an expense. 
So this is why we call it a deferred expense. In other words, when you first spent the $3,000 cash at the beginning of the month, you did not record all $3,000 as an expense. You recorded it as an asset, prepaid insurance. And then you deferred the recognition of that asset into an expense with the passage of time. And at the end of February, a month later, you would make the same adjusting entry, debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance for another thousand for the same reasons that we did it on January 31st. So you make that entry on January 31st, the adjusting entry for a thousand, you make the same entry on February 28th, which is debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance for another thousand. And then again, you repeat the same entry, debit insurance expense, credit prepaid insurance for, for the remaining 1,000 at the end of March. So every month for the next three months, you're making the same adjusting entry. And at the end of each month, your prepaid insurance balance is going down successively by 1,000. So on January 1st, your prepaid insurance balance was 3,000 because you had just acquired $3,000 of insurance coverage. At the end of January 31st, your prepaid insurance balance was, that's right, 2,000. Okay, at the end of February 28th, your prepaid insurance balance went down to 1,000. And at the end of March 31st, your prepaid insurance balance was down to zero. And yes, this makes sense because now as of the end of March, you have used up all of the three months of prepaid insurance. And what do you think happens on April 1st? That's right, you guessed it. You start the whole process again by writing out a check on April 1st for the next three months April, May, and June, and you repeat the cycle again. And that's why, my friends, we accountants will always have a job. So we do the same things in a repetitive fashion. And I don't mean a little facetious, but you get the point about uh, the repetitious cycle here. Okay? Now, another point to ask ourselves is, what if you forgot to make this entry? You forgot to make the adjusting entry at the end of January. What would be the effect on the financial statements? If a question like this comes about, what I would suggest in an exam situation is write out the entry first and then it's easier to answer the question as to what would happen if you did not make the entry if you wrote it out so you can look at it. So to answer the question, if you did not make this adjusting entry, let's say at the end of January, what's going to happen is your insurance expense will be understated. So anytime you have an expense that's understated, your net income will be overstated and your net income gets closed out into retained earnings or into capital if it's a proprietorship so your equity also gets overstated and at the same time your assets also are overstated isn't it so this is these are the ramifications of omitting this adjusting entry these are the ramifications on the financial statements to be more specific now the next question is are the books still in balance because you did not make this entry are the books still in balance if you did not make this adjusting entry? And the answer is a resounding yes. Your books will still be in balance. How? Well, take a look at the current equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. And based on what I just said a minute ago, your assets will be overstated if you don't make this entry. So your left side is overstated. There was no effect on your liabilities, no change there. But your equity also will be overstated because of your net income being overstated, as I just mentioned again a minute back. So your right side also is overstated. So both your left side, your assets, and your right side, your equity, both are overstated by the same amount. So you are, your books are, are incorrect, but they're still in balance. And this is where you have to be careful in accounting, where you can be in balance, but you're still wrong, as this situation just demonstrates. So this concludes our discussion on prepaids. Now, having got that behind us, let's move to the next situation involving supplies.